is about photography. I just wanted to um, give you a quick uh, showing of the border packs. Um, I've been creating a bunch of different border packs and people have been asking me questions such as um, how do I change the colors and um, how do I actually input the pictures. So I wanted to just give you a quick um, guideline on how to use it. So if you would open up, this is the brand new Happy Birthday Border Pack. Um, it comes with 12 different templates, 12 different borders actually. And it goes over any um, square size white grid. This one doesn't come with a grid, but you can, you know, you can make your own grids. You could buy your grids in my store or from somewhere else. Um, but these borders will go directly over a square white grid at multiple sizes. So um, when you open up this particular pack, what you'll see here is general guidelines that come with every one of my um, borders and grids and it's, a, it's just put here as a layer so you can see that and then you can click it off and close it or you could even choose to delete it if you don't want to you know if you don't need it anymore I also have specific um, directions for you through um, for the multi border packs so that you can um, use them for masking, you can choose borders, you can change the colors, but I'm gonna show you how to do some of that stuff today. So, take a quick look here. So I'm gonna close up all my directions because you really don't need them. And what I'm gonna do is show you the different borders. So here I have, if you look to the right side, you'll see that um, it says border options, which opens and shuts. So if you open that, I usually leave this usually just leave one um, border folder open at a time. So I'm going to click open the one that says happy birthday. And in the happy birthday border, we have um, three different varieties. We've got a blue one that says happy birthday. We have a black and white one. And we have a lovely pink one. All of the borders are a variety of different textures. So you'll see the blue one and the pink one and the black and white one have a different textural background and I did that on purpose because I'll actually show you why later. So um, you can close up the happy birthday borders. You don't even have to shut them all down. You can just close the little eye for that folder, which is what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to open up the happy, actually, whoops, all right, I'm going to open up the uh, happy first birthday borders and here you'll see that, and this is exactly why I always recommend that you only keep one border open at a time, because did you notice that there was a little black edging around this white border, but that black edging isn't supposed to be there. It's just that the blue border is slightly smaller than the one underneath it, so it could be deceiving. So you need to make sure that all other borders are shut down when you're working with one border. So here we have a first birthday in blue, a first birthday in black and white and a first birthday in pink and then we also have and I'm going to shut that down and open up the second birthday <clears throat> again I'm going to shut down all the other borders and you'll see I have a black and white happy second birthday a blue and a pink and last but not least there is a third birthday option. So this really gives you a nice variety of options for your clients of different ages. Um, we have the same thing for the happy third birthday, a different text, a different font, one in pink and one in black and white. So you also have a folder here that um, in orange, and that's where I'm just reminding you that you need to make sure that you put your images Oh, actually, I did this backwards. You need to put your images under the white grid. I'm going to have to go and switch that in my um, my product. But your images should go underneath the white grid. So here you're going to place your white grids in the purple one. And it's just an empty folder, just reminding you where to place your white grid. And then um, images go in below the white grid and they can go into that folder. You don't need to use the folders. They're really just there for reminders for you and to help you with organization. But if you choose not to use them, that's really up to you also. So let me show you something interesting that you can do with a border. 
Well, first, I'd like to show you how you can import in a grid. So, um, let's see, I'm going to open up, I'm going to play place embedded because I already have um, pictures with, whoops, wrong place. I already have pictures with um, <clears throat> out a grid. And as you can see, this is my entire computer. Organized yet not organized. <laughs> okay, where are you, picture? Looking for a white. Okay, you know what? We're just going to use our Freebie Friday white border. So I'm going to place that in. I went to file, place embedded, found my file, and I pressed, uh-oh, and Photoshop shut down on me. So hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. My Photoshop shut down. So in the interim, I opened up a whole bunch of other things that I probably should have had prepared before. Okay, so I'm going to just show you how to pull a... Um, I opened up a nice picture. I have this picture that I could either import. I could either have taken the picture and gone... I'll show you. From my file place embedded, and then I would push the picture that I want, click place, and wait for it to come in. I notice that I'm going to um, accept it. I notice that it came in right in where it says place white grid here. Okay, if it doesn't show up in the exact spot you want it, you just a layer on your right hand side, you can just take it and move it and place it into the folder that you want. So you'll see that it fit beautifully underneath my border. I have this picture of these adorable children. I click off the picture. If I want to resize this picture, I just press Control I, I mean Control T, so sorry, Control I was wrong, Control T, and I'm using my transformation tool to just enlarge it and move it around. That was Control T or command T, depending on if you're using a Mac, to um, make it larger or smaller, however you feel fit. So now I have my picture in, that looks good. This is just for um, example anyway, this is where I would want it. And I can look now at, oops, I went back to being opposite by accident. All right, so I have opened my happy birthday borders. And I'm going to click open that folder again on the right hand side. And I like, I really like that blue one, but you know what? I'm curious how it would look if it was pink. Because maybe I photo, maybe I took a picture of a little girl and it was her birthday. So I click a button and now it's pink. But wait, I think I'd really rather do some black and white. So I click a button and now it's black and white. I like the blue one. So. I'm going to go back to that one to black and white, but you know what? What if I like the texture, but I'd like to change the color of my border? How do I do that? There is an option. There's actually many options. The first option I'm going to show you is I'm going to press, I'm going to, I am right now on the blue border, right in the layers panel where it says under happy birthday, I am highlighted that blue border. You have to make sure that you are, um, that you have the correct layer, that you're working on the correct layer when you do this. And now I'm going to invert the layer. That's control I, was what happened before by accident. Control I or command I. And what does that do? That inverts the color of my layer. So the opposite of blue is this funky looking orange color. I'm not thrilled with that color, but maybe you like it. Maybe it actually would match something <clears throat> that you'd be working with. So um, notice that not only is the border um, color change, but so is the text color. Everything is inverted to the other side. Um, all right, well, maybe I do want to do something different to the blue. This is how I would do it. 
so that I am going to do this in a way that um, is non-destructible, meaning that I want to change the color of the border, but I might want to keep my options open and go back and change it back. So I'm going to press layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to go to hue saturation. I'm going to, to I'm going to uh, click use previous layer to create clipping mask. I want to clip this so I'm not changing the saturation of my entire photo, but just the saturation of this grid and press OK. And now I have a clipping mask attached to the blue photo and only the blue photo. So now what I'm going to do is I'm in my saturation, my hue saturation. I could just take the slider for hue and I can just slide it to the left. Oh, look at these nice colors to the all the way down. I can slide it all the way to the right. Get some more pretty colors. Oh, I really like that pink, but I think I'd like it to be a little more saturated so I can bring up the saturation. Oh, now I think it's a little too saturated. Maybe I'll bring it down and make it really desaturated. So there's just a hint of the pink. Um, I'm going to bring my lightness, maybe my lightness down, maybe my lightness up, make it a little brighter. Bring my, I can even bring my saturation all the way down and <clears throat> just make it this nice gray color, which uh, you might like also. So let's say I keep it at this nice gray color, but oh, I, I think I'd like it to be the opposite. I can then once again, click on my blue, control or command I and invert it. And now I have more of a black and white look to it. No, but I wanna go back, no, I didn't really wanna do that. So control, I am going back, take my hue saturation, bring my saturation back up. Maybe I want to go in and do a little bit more in the reds. So I go into my master, click over here, go into reds, and now I could change the hue of just really the red. Oh, it's not really doing much. So bring up the saturation up and down. Okay, another thing you can do to change the color of your border, other than the invert invert or hue saturation, I'm going to delete that layer, is you can go back again to layer, adjustment layer, and then you can go to color balance. Again, I'm going to use previous layer to create a clipping mask. I want it clipped only the border. So I'm clipping it. And then I'm my um, color balance is up here on the right hand side. I could change it in this direction and that direction. I can really have a little bit more of just the mid-tones. I can change yellows, just the yellows, the blues. Um, maybe I want to just focus on the highlights a little more. Look at that. That's pretty, actually. I like that color. Um, so this gives you a, a little bit more control in a different way. Um, let's say I decided, oh, I like this, but um, I want to see how it looks on the pink. So I'm going to shut off my um, my layer here, my pink layer. I'm going to take my uh, my hue my uh, color balance clipping mask, and I'm going to just bring it down to the pink layer. But wait, now see what happened was I brought it down, I laid it right on top of the pink mask, but everything changed. All the color balance changed. I didn't want to do that. So what I need to do is. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to right click on color balance and I'm going to say create clipping mask. And now I'm clipping that color balance to the pink layer and only the pink layer. So you'll see the pink layer was a softer pink. Now I have um, this bright pink, but I want to change it to um, maybe something with a little bit more cyan in it. Um, maybe I want to change a little bit more yellow into it. And that's how I would go about changing <coughs> the colors. I'm going to uh, show you one more thing, which I think is pretty cool. I'm gonna open up the black and white layer. Close that one off. I think I'm getting a little um, bleed through over here because my, my picture is a little bit larger and not shifted underneath the, the grid correctly. Let me see, I'm going back to my picture for a second. I'm gonna press Control T into the photo and I'm going to actually just bring the picture. I'm going to just play with it a little bit. I can do that with the 
with the uh, picture itself, or if that's not exactly working, um, then I can always go into the grid itself. Where's my grid? Oh, this is the grid. And I can also press Control T to change the size of the grid, of course. So if it's not really working so well for, you need to up the size of your grid a little bit or bring it down a little bit, that's always an option. And press Enter. And actually, what I, there we go. So I'm gonna take this grid, transformed it a little bit. I'm going to press Control I and I'm gonna invert that grid. And now I have a full black and white opposite where I have the white letters and the black grid. So that is why I didn't provide you with a variety of different colors. That's why I provided you only with three different textural types because I knew that once you understood how to use the grids themselves and how to use um, the controls that you have in Photoshop, you can really make an endless amount of different colors and textures um, grids. So you have, you know, a more textural pattern, you have a different textural pattern, and then you have the straight on black and white, which you can invert to make it white and black. Um, you can also play around with your opacity. Maybe you don't really want your grid to be fully black, but you'd like it to be a little bit less bold. So if you just played with, I'm just, all I'm doing is taking the opacity down and I'm bringing it way down. And now I really like that. I brought my opacity down. It sort of blends a little bit in with the picture. Now the kids are in focus, are the focus. Um, so, so there you have another option to change uh, the opacity. You can also change the opacity, let's say in the pink one, same thing, bring it down, bring it down. Oh, now you have just like this really opaque pink color <clears throat> going around your border. And that is pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to hit me up on Facebook, Elisa Beth Photography, or of course, at our Facebook group at Inside the Box Photography. Um, and uh, thanks for joining me today.